Well, hello there, my gorgeous, beautiful, wonderful queen bees. It is your girl, Amanda, the buzz artist. Welcome back to my channel, a place where you can let loose and just have fun with your acrylic paint people. And today, we're going to be painting these adorable ornaments for Christmas on the Arteza wood slices. I did a review with the Arteza wood slices a couple months ago, so if you want to check out my full-length review on that, you can check out that video in the description below or up in the card. But the first thing I'm going to do with these ornaments is to prime them. Now, if ever you've heard me talking about gesso or priming, really it's a great way for you to make sure that your surface is nicely primed so that all your paints that you're going to be putting on top do not absorb through the wood and wood is a very porous material we all know this so i went ahead and primed each one of the ornament faces that i wanted to work on and then i decided to gather all the paint materials that i needed you can find a list of all of those in the description below but y'all I have to say this, I am actually super, super excited to do these ornaments. I actually haven't done an ornament painting video on this channel and I figured, hey, you know what? Why not? Let's, let's just get tiny with it and have a little fun. The name of the game here really is just using a lot of tiny brushes and tiny little strokes and being very, very detailed and very slow and methodical in the process. This is something I would totally recommend you do with some music, with a cup of coffee or some tea, and just sit back and relax or even watch a movie while you're doing this. It, it's actually really, really therapeutic. <laughs> I know for me in my pregnant state, I really needed something that was a little more therapeutic, something to help me relax. And for some reason, just painting little detailed lines, <laughs> especially with the Santa's workshop ornament that I'm working on right now, it just kind of hit the right notes for me. So as you can see here, I actually used a variety of different pigments and paints to start doing the workshop here. And I kind of wanted to, well, let me just walk you through my process of what I was trying to do here with this particular ornament. So to do Santa's workshop, I kind of started with like an orange yellow to set the background tone of the entire building. And it also had a green trim for the roof. It also has columns on the front of it that resemble that of candy canes. So I represented that literally with just a red line <laughs> or a series of red lines to imitate candy canes. So I'm, I was just trying to get into like the Christmas mindset of like, okay, what are some really nice saturated Christmas colors? What are really fun pops of color that I can put in here? So really, if you don't have these exact pigment colors but you have something similar or you want to go in a different direction with your colors hey by all means go for it you've got the traceable again it's an, it's a linked in my description put it all in here and have at it have as much fun as you want with all these colors and all the color mixing here is pretty rudimentary I just went with the straight up colors that I had taken from my Arteza premium acrylic paints so right here using the yellow ochre to do the trimming of the workshop itself um, I kind of wanted to like bouge it up a little bit with a little bit of the trim <laughs> and of course usually on the first shot when you're doing stuff like this it's always going to be a little tad bit of a messy process. Um, I know like with my line work, I had to kind of go over it a couple times with a little bit of water to help me get those really crisp lines that I was going for. But uh, at the end, I was actually really, really impressed because what I ended up doing afterwards, after I did all like the tiny little detailed line work was just go in with my um, Arteza Everblend marker which is really good for applying on top of acrylic paint and just going in and adding in my detail line work and that was what really kind of pulled everything together I thought so <laughs> I honestly wasn't too worried as I was doing this if it looked a little messy you know you can always go back in later and clean things up with with very crisp lines with like a marker of some sort and if you don't happen to have like a Copic marker or um, an alcohol-based marker like I have here, you can totally just use a Sharpie. That could also work too. So yeah, I was actually 
trying to look up some reference images for what I would do with Santa's workshop. Like I looked up Dickens Villages. That was something that I grew up with when I was a little kid. My mom was obsessed with Dickens Village. <laughs> like I remember she and my grandmother both like really, really got into it and just started collecting a ton of little houses. And I remember one of my favorite ones was actually Santa's workshop. And I was thinking to myself, oh my gosh, that would be so cool if I can just get some sort of like mini representation of what that workshop would look like. And I wanted to, I, I remember for some reason the Santa's workshop had like a clock on the center. I think it also got represented that way in the Nightmare Before Christmas when they showed Santa's workshop. It had like a little clock that showed on the very top of like that tower so i was thinking hey you know what let's put a clock in there i think that'll be kind of like a really cool aesthetic it's super super tiny obviously <laughs> but um i think it kind of gets the aesthetic across it gets the message across definitely of what we're trying to do here and um of course in the traceable i left the sign blank so you can put anything in there that you want you can have it be you know santa's workshop or have it say something else that is totally up to you but i decided i wanted to go with workshop and go from there and i just added it in my little hands of the clock and just like little tiny details on the house itself as well as like on the door and on the window windows and stuff i think what really makes this work is how detailed you can get with this like the more detail the more like intricate line work that you can do on this the better and i thought that really worked out in my favor for sure but oh my gosh people um considering the fact so from my previous video i had mentioned that you know i am taking a maternity leave very very soon if not now um, i'm expecting my little girl to arrive sometime in the beginning of december um, which probably has already passed at this point so i've been like pre-recording all the videos <laughs> ahead of time just so i can give you all content while i'm away tending to my daughter and just being a mom with her i don't want to have the stress of having to <laughs> you know give you guys videos and at the same time trying to be a mom at, you know it, it was just it's just a lot for me so i decided hey let me just pre-record as many videos as i possibly can put them out um, at a schedule so that that way you guys can still see content for me and I'm not completely like MIA <laughs> for months on end. So this is one of those videos and I have to say, even though pre-recorded this earlier, I am just feeling so much in the Christmas mood right now. It's not even funny. <laughs> like I actually started listening to some classical Christmas music on Amazon because I just I just wanted to hear and feel the spirit of the holidays. It is probably one of my favorites besides Halloween and Thanksgiving. Like let's it's not let's just give Thanksgiving a little bit of, you know, a little bit of credit here because I feel like it's often that holiday that everybody not, doesn't think about. We just kind of glass over it and then we just go straight into Christmas right after Halloween. But I am I'm a huge fan of Thanksgiving. It's also when my birthday is happening. So We'll see if um, my little girl is going to share the same birthday as me because we're, she's going to be within a week or so um, after my birthday that she's due to come. So <laughs> oh, it's going to be crazy. Oh, and this is my favorite part here. I was actually putting in little areas of snowflakes and areas of where like steam is coming out of the chimneys. And I just did that with a little bit of titanium white. And wow, it really transforms the scene for me here. It really makes it look a lot more Christmassy. And there's like a big old flurry around Santa's workshop. Big, big fan. <laughs> And now this one is probably one of my most favorites that I've done because, well, it's not entirely that complicated, but I just love holly leaves and holly berries. I, I don't know, like you'll probably see this in the other two ornaments that we're going to be painting later, but I try to incorporate holly leaves everywhere uh, whenever I'm trying to like it, indicate some sort of Christmassy vibe. It's just something that I always associate with Christmas and um, the colors are just so rich. They're vibrant. They contrast each other. They're just completely and utterly fantastic. <laughs> So what I forgot to also mention too is that a lot of these 
ornament topics that I am painting were actually suggestions that I had gotten from you, my beautiful, darling, gorgeous, wonderful queen bees. So I wanted to thank you once again for giving me these awesome, awesome notes of inspiration. Someone had wanted to do silver bells, so I decided to take a crack at that by doing it here. Now, I actually released another video previous to this where I did my, my drawing process for all these ornaments, so you can check that out in the description below or up in the card. But yeah, it just kind of showed my whole process of how I put all of this together and thought about the color schemes and stuff. And that's, some, that's a note that I want to tell you all when it comes to um, creating anything that you're making or whatever. You, you want to find a way to strategize and figure out what color scheme you want to go with because yeah I've had my fair share of you know just going in blind and just hoping that the colors all work together but I get very disappointed at the end because it the colors don't turn out the way I did and I had spent all that time putting things together so I, I really wanted to make sure I got the colors right so doing that on a sketchbook first planning out the colors with my Everblend markers and then going in with paint was the best bet that I possibly could do for myself as an artist and I highly recommend that you do that as well I know it, it, it's extra work but it, it is something that pays off in the long run and once again, Queen Bees, we're going back in here with the Everblend marker, the black one here, and I, I really like to do my, my detail line work. That's just kind of like my MO. That's really what I like to do. And again, detail, detail, detail. I try to get this as detailed as possible for what it is to, again, just show off a little bit of that artiste talent that I have, <laughs> but also just to have a little fun and just give a little bit of an intrigue to the ornament. So really take your time with this. It really is a very enjoyable, lovely, therapeutic time. And of course, just add a little bit of a highlight with that titanium white to put the whole thing into gorgeous Christmas aesthetic. And okay, so uh, somebody had suggested that I do something with forest creatures looking all cute wearing Santa hats. <laughs> and I have to say, I am in love with this idea because I don't know why, but a raccoon came to my mind. <laughs> I, I just think they're so funny. They're so cute. I feel like especially around this time of the year in, in New England where I live, we have a ton of raccoons that are just going through the garbage <laughs> trying to get some food for the winter. So we do get to see a lot of them popping around this area and my goodness, they are adorable. I mean, I wouldn't go near one, but they are just the cutest things I have ever seen. So. I decided, hey, let's do a painting of a raccoon. I think it would be really, really cute. And I just wanted to give them these big, 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 big doll eyes. I think that's what makes them so cute. That's what makes like any kind of animal that you're painting super, super cute is by um, making their eyes just really, really, really big like doll eyes and giving them really big pupils with like highlights. So that way it kind of shows them looking like really innocent and they kind of do look a little on the sad side. Um, but I don't know. I kind of feel like this is the aesthetic I want to go for with this cute little raccoon he was just everything that I wanted and more <laughs> and uh, I actually decided to do more of a brush line application work as opposed to using my Everblend marker here and this is totally up to you if, if you feel much more comfortable using a detail brush like I am over here hey by all means go for it it does take a little bit of a fine hand however it's all what you're comfortable with. If you're not so comfortable using a detail brush, but you'd rather go with a pen, go with a pen by all means. I'm not telling you how to do what you got to do. This is your time, your process, right? <laughs> and so I just kind of go in once again, doing my line work, adding in various strokes to indicate how furry our little creature is. And I even went in with like a darker gray on the insides of his ears um, and, you know, filling in those parts of the eyebrows with that nice cold gray. And again, adding in little bits of highlights, 
adding in more of that cuteness and um, I actually did mess up a little bit here of course you guys have your traceable so you don't have to really worry about this part but as I was putting him in the snout I realized that you know the nose was a little too high so I had adjusted it with the cold gray all I had to do really was just wait for the acrylic paint to dry and then I can just go back in with my paint and apply it the way I wanted it to and that's what's really really awesome about acrylic paint I, I, I feel like I say this constantly but um, you really really can do so much with this medium once it's dry because the layers underneath won't reactivate and it takes like maybe five to ten minutes to completely dry so you can just go right back in and fix any and all mistakes thank god because I actually also mess up on the whiskers on the left side so I just waited for the paint to dry just a tad before I went in and repainted And now the piece de resistance, <laughs> my mousse. So somebody also wanted me to do a mousse and I thought, oh my gosh, let me just combine this idea of, of making a mousse with um, wearing a cute, adorable Santa hat. And it kind of went really, really well for me. <laughs> Really, I just grabbed some burnt umber, combined it with a little bit of titanium white to do the fur, and then just yellow ochre for the antlers themselves. And I just went ahead and filled this in. Honestly, it's not really rocket science once you've gotten the whole image together, which is pretty awesome. I, I actually was very surprised. I never really, I, I don't really do a lot of paintings of forest creatures or animals in general, only because, I don't know, they just don't interest me that much. But I don't know, in the context of Christmas, especially here, I really had a blast painting this moose and that raccoon. Totally, totally unexpected on my part of me enjoying that process. And you'll notice here that I pre pretty much just use my detail round brush. I really didn't veer off the beaten path too much afterwards. I just felt comfortable using a very small brush to get all of my line work down pat. So that really worked out for me. <laughs> and if you're all wondering, you know, what kind of brushes I use, why I use certain brushes, or, you know, how I chose my colors, everything kind of, that kind of goes into acrylic painting in general, I actually just released a free little mini course called the Acrylic Painter's Toolkit and it basically walks you through all of the perfect tools and resources that you need to create a successful acrylic painting. It's a totally free class. You can check it out in the description below. You can just sign up and start accessing the course and learning all there is to know about acrylic painting. I highly recommend it if you're really interested in giving it a try. So why not? <laughs> Radio. So I went back in with that Everblend marker and just started to finish the outline and line work of my moose, adding in little details like along the fur line, just to again, show that it is a very hairy looking moose. <laughs> and I'm of course taking my time, not rushing through the entire process, of course, but yeah. I'm really happy that I just got this done and I'm going to be definitely hanging these up on my tree as well as giving it as little gifts for my family members because I know that there are some people that just love moose and raccoons and stuff. They love the cute little forest creatures. So um, I'm definitely going to be giving these out as gifts and you should consider doing so as well uh, as you're doing this same kind of ornament with me. Super fun, really, really great way to just let loose and have fun with your acrylic paint. And so those are all my ornaments, Queen Bees. I had so much fun and I hope that you did too following along with me. And please let me know how your ornaments came out. You can always find me on Facebook or on Instagram. Tag me. I'd love to see how your ornaments came out. I'll leave links to all of my social media in the description below. So be sure to check that out. All right, my darling, gorgeous, beautiful, wonderful Queen Bees. I wish you all a happy holidays. Remember to love yourselves and always have fun with your art. I'll see you all next time. Bye.